Hello everyone. Hope you all are having an amazing day. To make your day even more interesting, we at Intellipad have brought the latest video on UI UX. But before we begin the session, make sure to subscribe to our channel and also hit on the bell icon so that you will never miss an update from us. Now let's see the agenda of the day. Firstly, we will begin with introduction to UI UX. Post that, we will be explaining you a few basic concepts of UI UX design. Then later on, we will be learning about what is design thinking and its stages. Post that, we will see how to recruit users. After that, we will tell you how to identify and write problem statements. Post that, we will tell you how to identify appropriate research methods. Then we will see what is interactive designing and wireframing. Then finally, we have covered how to make a career in UI UX. So guys, this is the agenda. Now let's begin the session. Almost every person is online right now, either on desktop or mobile phones. The comfort and accessibility of mobile applications are the main reason why opting for mobile over desktop. In 2018, the number of mobile apps downloaded worldwide was 205.4 billion, which is expected to reach 258.2 billion by 2022. This shift made UI UX designing an integral part of the any product based company. UI UX design is a science that works on improving the user experience and usability of the application. Almost every company including Facebook, Amazon and Google invests heavily in it. UI design is the process of transforming wireframes into a polished graphical user interface. This both enhances a product's usability and creates a connection between the end user and the product. A user experience or UX is therefore made up of many user interfaces which come together in a seamless flow to form a product. The difference between user experience and user interface is that UX is about the experience a user has with the product or service while UI refers to the aesthetic elements by which people interact with the product. And UX focuses on interaction design, wireframes, information architect, user research and scenarios. UI focuses mainly on visual design, colors, graphic design, layouts and typography. Despite the differences, UI and UX are not entirely different. Both UI and UX are crucial to work closely to determine how a product will function and be visually attractive with each other influencing the other. Imagine you spend months creating a beautiful website only to get the result that people can't find what they're looking for and struggle to navigate. No matter how attractive and aesthetically pleasing the interface is, without user experience, users will become frustrated because of its lack of usability and will leave your site. The role of a user experience designer is to understand the customer's journey. That means understanding the target audience, interviewing customers, defining user flows and conducting user testing. A UI designer's job begins where UX designer's job ends. And that is at the prototyping stage. They take the wireframes and add visual design to make them more usable, aesthetically appealing and optimized for different screen sizes. The starting salary of UI UX designer in India is 10 lakhs per annum and once you gain experience it will be in the range of 18 to 25 lakhs per annum. And similarly in USA the average salary is $100,000. There are over 1 lakh jobs available related to UI UX design just in India. Let's start the journey. Let's talk about uh, something about what exactly is UX uh, design and what is UI design. So UX design, many of us already must be knowing about this basic. Uh, this is about user experience design. It is the process of enhancing user satis satisfaction with a uh, product by improving usability, accessibility, and the pleasure in providing the interaction with the product. So when we are when we are talking about UX, we first talk about the usability of that product, the inclusiveness. When we talk about accessibility, like it should be as inclusive. When we are talking about audiences, we should be able to include as many audience as possible into that uh, you know uh, that design. 
and it should provide a satisfaction, a pleasure out of it. Those are the aim of the user experience design. Those are the criteria of, for the success of the UX user experience design. How, uh, like we, we talk about the two terms, like first is UX and the other is UI. So, so what is UI? So UI is actually the graphical interface that is the part of the overall user, ex user experience design. So that's, that's makes them the different, you know, the UX is a bigger term, whereas UI is talking about presenting the whole research, whatever we have done in a most aesthetic and pleasant way so that a user can perform their task in a better way. So that's UI. Okay, uh, what we are going to understand during this uh, session is all this. The first thing we are going to discuss, we are going to talk about is concept of UX and UI. Second thing is designing, design thinking and its stages, which is very integrated part of UX. Uh, so we will talk about it. The third thing is observe and engage people for whom you are designing the product. Then understand the problem, the definition, how we def, you know, define the problem, and then the design the right solution for it. So this is critical, like when we define properly, then we'll be able to give the right solution. Then we talk about the approach of thinking, which could be divergent or convergent uh, thinking. Uh, and then the last thing is about testing, as it for last, this is last thing, since testing and prototyping. So we'll talk about all these things in this session. Let's talk first about uh, this thing, which is uh, like uh, user experience design is the process of, uh, you know, uh, process design teams used to create product that provide meaningful, relevant experience to user. This involves the design of entire process of acquiring, integrating the product and including aspect of branding, design, usability and functions. So this, all these things are united. This is the definition of our UX design. Okay, now let's talk about one by one of all these things. Uh, you will see that the design is the, is, is the defining human endeavor and it separates us from all other species. Take a look around you and uh, right now, and you will notice that everything, whatever you see or experience, or even you sleep, all the product or communication that has some design element into it. Somebody has designed it for you. That is the design thing. In another words, user experience design or user design is everywhere from how you interact with some smartphone even or, or or your home is designed or not all the, all the experience uh, and uh, that's why ux design is such an incredibly exciting and rewarding re rewarding field to be in right now let's look at the uh, the old history of of ux design it started like way back uh, you know even in the ancient rooms romans they, they used to you know have this design thinking in their when they work, they developed the theory of aesthetics to construct amazing building that they have stood and test of time. A person called Vitrivelis is a renowned Roman architect who wrote the first ever book on architecture, asserted that the good design must be must have the qualities of durability, usefulness, aesthetics. These qualities are important for UX design even today, after thousands of years also. The other thing you will see that the from early 70 to 80 UX design was known as human computer interaction or HCI. HCI rose to prominence just as a personal computer uh, become prom like main, mainstream and that was not a coincidence. You see that before even 70s in the 70s computer were just large machine. Those were operated by punching line or all those things. So most of the people computer were really, really very hard, but in seventies Xerox introduces the first personal computer and it was not only the small, but utilizes the first, it utilized the first graphical interface also. So that's how, why I'm telling this, because that's how the UX design practice started evolving right from there. As soon as the 
graphic user interface can come into the picture right um you will also see that uh from uh, this thing instead of uh, line of code now when the personal computer come into the picture instead of lines of code which the coder or engineer only can uh, access or work with now we use that time we started using windows like we started using window icon or mouse or all those thing and it started a revolution actually soon company like apple or microsoft um, they borrowed uh, you know the company called alto to create their own personal computer uh, this explosion of personal computer in 1780 led to people to ask for a uh, question like how should people interact with computer and how can we make the interaction as intuitive as when we interact with other human as people started finding that answer to the question the field of computer interaction in hsi started growing after that okay and then you know originally human computer interaction practitioner were mostly from the field such as psychology or computer science and they were mostly focused on concept of usability okay now how to make computer as intuitive as possible as the field of hsi grew the designer quickly realized that the designing intuitive computer requires a great understanding of other field such as motion graphic storytelling linguistics you know the content design ux design today is really a continuation of what is called hci or hci earlier now it has become hfi human factor international or, or the human factor uh, you know that that come into the practice later on let's talk about little more like today we are we are dealing with smart uh, phones right and uh, the whole idea has changed you know the today uh, like we have you know the very much increase or blast in the requirement of uh, user experience design actually because of the advent of smartphone because everything is there on the smartphone right now smartphones are used 90% actually as compared to the personal computer nowadays when we are talking about interacting with the with some products so so you so ux has become you know very prominent right now you know that it is it is about how can we make the experience of interacting with the computer or a smartphone or a product or services as intuitive and very smooth and pleasant as possible and that's where ux design is very much important you will see that uh, dr don norman uh, he also talks about uh, he's a prominent uh, designer who coined this phrase user experience he is the first person who named this this approach as a user experience design he said that design is everything design is everywhere sorry what he meant that the ux designer are not only concerned with the product when it is being used but also before the product it has been purchased or even after that so he is mentioning and 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 actually give highlighting that the user experience is even before during and after the product usage so the whole experience that should be fine let me give an example of uh, a coffee shop maybe starbucks you can have a coffee or tea anywhere in the market but if you have it in a starbucks the experience will change the whole experience like the whole ambience the way your waiter is coming and talking and uh, you know providing the, you the information the 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 fresh flavor of uh, cocoa and uh, the time there the 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 neatness and the you know the quiet ambience all those things are the whole experience this is what is the ux design when we talk about coffee it is just ui but when we talk about starbucks the whole environment of a coffee shop then it is the ux so that's what the ux is also uh, like we also care about designing the right market campaign about creating a unboxing experience so it is no more just a product design it is the whole customer experience you know right from understanding the the culture the the continuous innovation the the related employee who are connected on that product the customer market research the support system the help system you know and the feedback system everything includes you know around it now the you will also see that the it is a kind of a umbrella you know umbrella term when we talk about ux 
it not only apply or you know it not only refer to ui but it also refer to usability concern about usability whether the product is usable or not it's talk about it, it it one of the approach is psychology also we try to understand the psychology of the user the targeted user and how what and when they want to use it and also we would like to understand the demography the, the sociology of, of, of the when we are trying to solve a problem so it is not only just graphic design and you will see that there are other major factor when we are talking about ux design you will always have something relevant to bring to the field of ux design all you need is the constant drive for observing new knowledge and constantly improving it here on the right side there is a chart which shows that how you can grow up in uh, like coming as an apprentice and learning and then later on you can grow grow into a skilled uh, practitioner master craftsman then you become the leadership position like design manager design leader all those things so this is how this the career map the potential into the career of this uh, field is actually let's talk about uh, uh, what we have learned here now let's talk about a very simple practical approach applying the design thinking uh, exercise on this solution this problem which we have in our hand so let's make let's take it hypothetically take us let's take us back to the time where mobile application smartphone just came into the into being into the usage and that time we didn't have anything like whatsapp and let's think that we need to create a whatsapp as a solution and what could be the design thinking process applied on this this new process uh, in this new problem which is a able to communicate freely without uh, you know uh, registering and all those things so earlier so i'll tell you what i'm going to do here so earlier when the smartphone came we had a problem we had a chat program very popular like skype or msn but before that somebody will have to register themselves and especially when the smartphone came it is there in the hand of everyone even those people who are not tax savvy for for them to register themselves or adding friend was very difficult so this is the problem with the at that time so what so let's let's talk about in in the context of design thinking here so what happened like at that time let's read the uh, the problem statement here to the use of smartphone create a new kind of user who does not possess much expertise in phones it is tricky for him to create an account and add friends let's take make this persona somebody like ramesh who could be a persona for this this guy has a smartphone but he is not tech savvy he does not understand how to create account and add friend that time i'm not talking about previous time but that time when whatsapp just came into the picture so what could be the define phase then let's try to understand that create a chat application for mobile that does not require to create an account or add add user so this is the problem defined okay now what is the hill for him for in context of ramesh this new user ramesh can chat with his friend and his family without creating an account or without adding friends in an application so that's the hill defined for that do not get confused by hill please let's let's talk about only this basic requirement which is defining and this is one of the most important phase of design thinking that we need to design define the problem we need to capture the right problem because only around the right problem we shall be able to find out the real users and we will be able to understand them properly our beginning if this is right our our journey will start in the right way if this is wrong define phase is wrong our journey can become a nightmare so please remember this very critical phase of of the design thinking exercise okay let's move forward talk about the second very important phase which is called ideation so in this context of creating a whatsapp design whatsapp application what could be the idea ideation use sms and phone number instead of account creation use phone number as id and phone contact as friend now the solution given here is wonderful actually this user need not to go into that uh, difficult exercise that time for him of registering himself and and adding friend the solution came out which is not as simple as it is just quickly written here 
it could have must have been found by lot many brainstorming and design design thinking uh, you know workshops so this is the ideation phase where you will find out that this could be a solution that see that we have sms and we have phone number phone number are already can be used as a you know as a account creation um, step and the friends which are already there in the directory of the phone can be used as friends so that is a, the ideation phase and this, this so what we can just put the sponsored user on it like sponsored user would validate the solution as applicable for them okay let's move to the next step the first the the, the step the second step we are talking about ideate then the next step of design thinking is uh, uh you know uh, the prototyping so once we have ideated now come the laborious work called a prototype developing a prototype and once again going to the user iterating it uh, testing it with the user whether it is working with them if it is not working then we are coming back working on improving those gaps which is told by the by the user in the the feedback they have given and they further we once again go back to them we once again test it and keep on doing until we get a satisfactory result that's the prototype and testing phase of design thinking now once we have done that the prototype phase uh, we should play all the, the all this thing whatever we have refined or modified or or made it matured so far with our other team member like development team members the our business people and our offering management all those people should be discussed with this this thing why we are discussing with them we want to see whether the feasibility technical feasibility is there with this uh, uh, product this uh, this solution or not whether it is business business whether there is a business viability or not we have already tested our uh, checked our design with the user but these two more faces are also very important so that's why we need to run with the development team and the sales team once we have discussed with them we see that it is feasible or not feasibility feasible so our part the when 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 i'm saying our as a ux designer is a very critical part nowadays earlier like around even 5 years back i was i was seeing that it is engineer dominant practice whenever we are developing a a product whether it is a mobile application or a you know desktop based application engineer used to be everything you know because it was thought that a product should have feature and it should be successful now the whole uh, thinking has changed we first talk about our user we see that whether this product is working for them or not adding feature is not important adding only those feature which will make our users work comfortable and happy that is what we are trying to do now that is the successful product so again if a product is having 100 features a product which is having five features and those features are as per the user requirement uh, and and user is happy using it it is a better product than the product which is having 100 of feature in it so in today's world the uh, the product have become more design centric rather than engineering centric of course we need engineer definitely their role is still not less but the first it is a design it is a design uh, you know centric uh, product development the first thing has to be done by the by the designer then it should go to the uh, the engineers to to implement it okay let's move forward see uh, when we are talking about define uh, let me give an example of this WhatsApp example here. Okay, so when we have, we have a problem in our hand, I'm talking about the old days when smartphone just came in, WhatsApp has not come, but something like WhatsApp has to come. So at that time, uh, the problem in our hand was like how a non tech savvy guy can chat uh, comfortably on on mobile, right? So that is the problem statement. Now we need to define it. So we need to put like, uh, 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 like we need to have a, you know, a well-connected statement, the, the statement which is well-defined around which we are going to create a solution. So this statement is a problem statement. That is the defined phase. 
where we are trying to exercise and find out a right definition of our problem. Like in this case, if you will look at uh, this, uh, the problem is like how it is defined. The user of a smartphone uh, created uh, no no. Uh, so the so the def, the problem here is like how a non tech user create a you know chat comfortably uh, uh, you know on on mobile phone without creating or registering himself and adding friends. So that is the well defined statement for creating this solution called WhatsApp, right? They already had some solution called uh, MSN or Skype. They wanted to register first and add a friend. I don't know whether they are still asking for those things. So the problem was like this is a non tax savvy user and how he can still chat without doing those uh, complicated exercises. So that's the defining of the problem, right? But the the let me just uh, uh, tell you that the, def the defining is just defining the problem. What is the problem right now? That is what we need to define properly. Who are the user and what what kind of problem they are facing? That is the problem statement. We call it POV also. Point of it's called POV actually, where we define we say this is the user and uh, what problem he has and why he has this problem. So we use usually use three sentences for our defining the statement. This is the user. What is the problem he's facing and why he's facing this problem? So that's the defining the problem. Okay. So we were talking about define phase. Hope uh, the understanding is clear. When we are talking about define, we are defining the problem which this user is facing. Uh, that's the define phase. Uh, we talk about applying what's a problem with design thinking approach. We have done that. Now talk about the the other topic, which is called observe and engage. Now, when we trying to, this is in order to, you know, this is called the uh, research phase of our design thinking, where we are trying to understand our user and their problem. So when we are trying to understand our user and their problem, there are different approaches. One of them uh, is observe and engage. This is about the people for whom you are designing the product. We need to just engage them in the activity. How we can we do that? There are different method. Let's quickly talk about uh, you know about this this uh, like three uh, kind of approaches here. Like one is a natural environment when we are trying to understand our user. Go out where the, our users customers are. We are not artificially creating in our office in our design studio, but we are going out. Whether it is a retail shop or a dealership, this is where you can gain a lot of insight in the short time. Sit and watch how interaction happens. Feel free to approach customers and ask them questions about their experience. Some question you can ask yourself, uh, how are users interacting with this product in the store? That's what we need to, we need to learn actually. What type of question are they asking? Who are they, they with? Like we also need the e ecosystem also there. Who are they working with right now? The natural environment provides a lots of great opportunity for the observer. Don't just stop at one. However, try to look at a wide variety of location where you can your customer shop. So when we are saying don't stop at one, maybe we want to observe multiple customer. Like when we are talking about going to the natural environment, I'll let me give an example. Like if you want to design a ATM kiosk interface, right? Now, if there are some problem, it could be related to a person who is uh, physically uh, challenged. Maybe you might want to see, uh, like you, you want to make his experience, the task performance comfortable. How will you do that? The best way is you would want to see that person, physically challenged person, maybe a, a you know, uh, like visually impaired person who cannot look proper, see properly or cannot see at all, uh, you know, uh, how to create an interface for that person. How can you do that? The best way is just go to that kiosk where this user is using and just see how, what he is doing, where he is facing the problem. Maybe he, he do not know where to touch. Maybe, you know, you need is a voice interface. So all those solution will come when you will look the user performing there in their environment. So not only you are interacting with the right user, 
you are also being in the right environment, the natural environment where uh, the problem is being faced by that user. Only then you will be able to create the right solution. Okay, let's talk about the observation lab. This is also has become very popular. If you look at, the, let's talk about one example here. Another popular method is to create an environment to see how your customers engage with the, with the use uh, with the, with the, with using your product actually at at this company called PNG uh, Center in uh, in somewhere in Ohio uh, set up a lab that take customer discovery to a whole new level at the oral health science inside suit a two way mirror lets the company watch customer use product in in the bathroom or a kitchen this researcher can then note how user interact with those product and what they use uh, them for building a lab provide a different type of insight compared to the natural environment just a quick info guys intellipad provides advanced certification in ui ux design this course is developed and mentored by enict iit guwahati the course link of which is given in the description below now let's continue with the session since user knows they are being observed it may create a skewed result you know please remember that this is the disadvantage of when we are creating artificial environment people know that they are being watched and they will try to act smartly they won't act naturally you know they will try to act that they know everything or maybe they will feel that uh, no i cannot do anything they will surrender also so that's not the right or, or natural way but in some circumstances we can use observation lab labs also okay there could also be a day in life kind of approach when we are observing the user this can also be coined as fly on the wall like when you are observing your uh, users and uh, so you can just you know just sit somewhere you're not doing anything you're just observing them whatever they are doing you're just observing and finding out where they're stuck in and where they are doing well all those things can be you know can be noted you know and uh, this will create a study for us later reach out to some landscaping companies and see if you can tag along this is an example actually you can tag along for the day observe how they schedule work in the morning how a trailer gets to stock with the equipment how employees use the equipment out in the fields all those things are you know laborious and tidy and but give a tremendous result this is one of the appro approach of observe and engage okay uh, there is uh, one well established uh, document for observing your user doing something this can be divided into three things one is what second is how and third is why so what column is about object right concrete observation about this is a famous format uh, where we collect our observation data in any form of approach of observation we have done but data the best way of collecting data could be divided into three like what how and and why in what section we can talk about what this guy was doing the user right concrete observation about what the person was doing use descriptive phrases with objectives the second uh, thing come how how this person is working on that uh, thing whatever he is doing like for example that uh, the physically challenged guy at the kiosk is he is he doing like fumbling or he is actually uh, frustrated or worried or you know all those thing needs to be captured in this column when we are filling this information and the why column is like why he is doing that what is the motivation factor of, about that person maybe this physically challenged person must be the like independent guy there is nobody to support him and he has to come out he has to work or she has to work so this is the why part of it so that's how we need to just fill this kind of form to collect data to use on the later activities this is very well established um, data form which is designed by stanford um, you know design thinking uh, course so very practical and very you know popularly used let's talk about uh, the other thing understand the problem and define the right solution what we can do for that there are it can be divided into four uh, steps like immerse yourself in the data you have gathered about yourself or about the user synthesize the data you have gathered into insight organize and sort insights into theme and flow and meet with your team to develop a pov point of view generate a pov statement that is very important you know 
after all these studies, whatever we have done in the past, like observation or defining on all those things, the, the final thing would be generate a POV statement. That would be the beginning of the design approach, actually, once we have achieved this. And this is not simple. Although it is a simple, it, it's an statement, which could be one or two sentences long, but pretty powerful to you know go forward after that. So when we are talking about immerse yourself in the data and you have gathered uh, from, for, from your user, like you have gone out, you have interviewed people, you have observed them, the data is collected. Now, what will you do with this, those data? Okay, so if you, like we have discussed about uh, collecting data, once we have collected all the data, we uh, try to use different methodologies, methodologies like called empathy mapping, which is actually synthesizing the data collected uh, further into, you know, major parts, like how the user feel and how the user actually, this is how user says the thing statement, how they feel, how they thought, what they thought about it, what is their belief, and what are the action they perform on this. So this is uh, empathy Mac example. So this is how we synthesize all the data into the four part. Once we have done it, on the basis of that, our further study will go on and then we brainstorm along with other team members and uh, we create the problem statement or point of view, which I was talking about, which having this kind of a statement, like what is this person and what they need and why they need it. So this is the three section of point of view definition, which we are creating. So please remember that like in, in this example, there is a, there is a user called Nisha who is a QA executive, who is very good at her job, but lacks UI design understanding and expert IE for it. She needs now come the second uh, uh, part of the whole statement. She needs accurate UI checks without investing much time on it. Now come the third part because current process is time consuming. This is the, the pain she's facing right now and needs lots of effort, which prevents her from doing her actual software quality check, like functional bug identification. So who is the user, what they need and why they need it. These are the three section of the point of view, which we need to define, which can be based on, which can derive from this kind of empathy mapping and synthesizing the solution, right? And let's go back uh, to our, so, so immerse yourself, that's what we have done and synthesize the data you have gathered that you do with the help of empathy map and other things. Organize and sort insight into the theme and flow, meet with your team and decide your point of view, generate the statement, which is, which is the part of this understanding the problem and defining the problem. Let me check if you have anything more. Okay, let's go to the next step. Let's talk about the uh, two kinds of thinking which is involved in uh, defining or uh, approach to the problem. The convergent thinking and divergent thinking. So convergent thinking is the based on the factual thing, the fact answer. Whereas divergent thinking is based on the emotion and assumptions and all those things. So on the basis of it, uh, like if it can graphically also be defined, like in the convergent thinking, you will see that fact gives the answer. You, your questions are, uh, answer to your questions are facts actually. But whereas in divergent thinking, the, uh, the questions, the answer to question are ideas, assumptions. So, and why we are doing it? Because we require both kind of, you know, thinking process while we are trying to evolve or make a solution. So that's about divergent and uh, convergent thinking. Let's talk about the last stage of design thinking, which is testing and prototyping. Test those possible solution. You know, whatever you are creating the solution, those are hypothetical solution. Those are not practical. You are in the beginning phase. So everything is hypothesis, right? These are assumptions. So you need to test those solution and get the feedback from the real people that will help you improve your ideas and create solution. So test is a major component of hypothesis driven innovation, which argues that uh, designers should develop product 
you know, iteratively in, in order to reduce the risk, prevent building and avoid overspending. In order to develop the product iteratively, you need to uh, build and test MVP. I, I show you must be doing MVP minimum viable product. So, so what we do, we do not create the whole, the full flow, flown, full featured uh, product in the beginning only. We first start with prototype. We test our prototype with our users. Then we create MVP, the minimum viable product. We run it, we market it and see how it is functioning. Then we keep on adding the features as, as the time goes by or product involved. That's how product involved. When we get the feedback from people that this feature is missing or something, we come up, uh, beef up our product with more features and make it more practical and more usable, actually. So that's how the whole process of design thinking in nutshell. Conducting user research and method. See, actually, uh, as a user research, we have two phases. The first is the research phase and second is you know testing phase. So UX research has two parts, as I'm just told. Gathering data, synthesizing that data in order to improve usability. And at the start of the project, design research is focused on learning about project's requirement. So from business people, we try to understand what is required to create this application. And then later, we try to understand the need of the user also. How we do it? We do it like with gathering the data, synthesizing it, conducting interview, collecting surveys, and reviewing the existing literature, data, or analytics. So these are also the part of the whole research uh, activity, what we do. So you can see that the purple things are talking about user research, but after that, when we have a crude or rough or fine interactive prototype available in our hand, we just move to iteratively throughout uh, the design process, the research focus shifts to usability and sentiment. Researchers may conduct the usability test or A-B test or interview user about the process, generally test assumption that will improve the design. So what they do once we have uh, done the cross the purple stage, we start, you know, we have a, a prototype in our hand, we go to the user and we iteratively discuss about how they find this uh, prototype or the solution and user will use it and we will validate we will see how it is working and we will keep on changing it until we get the uh, you know sensible prototype or a design once we have then we lead to the final design that's how we do in our uh, user research method understand the type of different ux uh, research let's talk about that so first of them is interviewing uh, so interviewing user is one of the way of understanding uh, our user, their pain areas and uh, their sentiment also, their frustration and all those things. So why we use this kind of method, user interview? So highly qualitative UX research method that help to get to know user personally. It find pain point, which is difficult in other uh, approaches of research, collect more insight, and pain point, and that may not come up from the other methods. That's what. So whenever we have a face-to-face -face user interview, we can get all kind of you know pain area understood easily because we are talking to them. And this kind of interview can be face-to-face. -face. It can also be remote, telephonic, or maybe on you know these kind of tools like Zoom, or virtual interviews. So anything is possible. And this is very productive. This is called qualitative research method. Then comes the field research method of user research. Here, what we do, we go out and we go and sit with the user in their environment and we watch them using the product, spend time with them, stand behind them, quietly observe what they're doing and even ask question why they are doing it, why they are not opting for other options if they are available, why they are choosing this thing. So we are trying to understand what this user is doing. Just to mention a few cases, we use field research in call center. Like these are the example, like in a call center when we are using a management software or maybe at airport in a booking app or a kiosk in hospital where, where the doctors are using applications. All those are the places where we can go out and we try to understand as how they work. Why this field research is unique, you know, in some cases, because for example, if it is a airport booking uh, application or a kiosk, 
you want to see in that noisy environment or very hectic environment how the user is performing and how they are doing it so that's why field research is having its own advantage we have one more unique method which is not very frequently used it's called a diary study when we are trying to research some user for our you know innovative challenge we select some of the users and we ask them to note their activity on day to day basis so this is called diary study method so what it does you can find out what happened in there is an example like whenever there is a complex you know process in doing something this method gives a very good result because on minute basis this user is not minute basis but maybe the major activities this person is capturing his feedbacks his frustration and it is getting noted and intermittently we just check and monitor how this guy is noting down and what he has noted down so that's called the diary study now let's look at the other way of also online research is the another a way of doing research online research does product discovery well information about people and their problem filled in the internet you will find abundant amount of problem of the users the prospect the targeted user you can find it on internet and you know you can just analyze their activities or their feedback all those things it is bit you know time consuming and tedious because you will have to search you will have to exactly look for those uh, data which is related to your prospective or targeted user it is difficult but it gives very good result because there is lot of data is there in the in, on the internet online other way of ux research is usability testing it is a little bit different from the whatever we have discussed so far why it is different because it is come after when we have actually created a prototype it comes after the ideation phase it comes after so many things which we have already done essentially it is done with the prototype so after getting a clickable prototype or even just some sketches start testing these idea usability testing will uncover many usability issues actually once you have created the prototype on the basis of the research you have done and when you are taking this prototype to the user and when user is trying to use it you will find out that there are gaps or no gap or there are you know things to improve so this is the best way to take your prototype or mvp to a next level of the product which will make more sense actually okay uh, we have ab testing also so ab testing is nothing but to just have at least two or multiple you know option of one variant of one uh, prototype or product and run it with your user and see different group of user and see what kind of feedback you are getting only thing that we need to take care of uh, while we are doing ab testing that we do not have very different options okay maybe we have one function which is different in one option than other or two not more than that if you will put more then you know it will prevent defining the cause of the winners uh, like a is better or b is better so that will become difficult so it is always good to whenever we are creating two options or multiple option just have one or two functions different from the other let's move to uh, one more very unique and you know a different way of usage is called card sorting you know card sorting helps create navigational structure and information architecture so what we understand here that card sorting is especially useful when we are trying to create an information architect like which information should come prominently which should have the backstage and the overall structure of the website that is the information architect and card sorting helps in information architect because we are asking the user to group them to the, make the cluster of the activities which are actually near to each other and also label them the way they want why we are doing it because we want to understand the mental model of the users so if users are doing it so we are trying to understand from their angle as how the grouping of the information should be done and what should be the terminology or the name we should give to each of these you know pieces or the information so that's why it is best suited for information architect card sorting are of two kind one is called open the simple card sorting and the other one is reverse so open one is the same as we have discussed that we are having all the information which is kept on the table 
and we ask this user or the users that kindly make group according to make the structure according the way they want to look at they are working so this is called open card sorting and once we have done it when the user have done the, all those things and we have concluded with a information architect or that card you know kept in the way which is we found out in common with other users we ask the other user to see whether it is making sense or not that is called the reverse card sorting okay so these are the methods of ux research now let's see when we do this research the very important thing is that we need to find out the appropriate users you know on which this research this surveys or research should be done if we are having a wrong selection of user maybe our the whole ideation and creating solution may also go haywire so it is very very important that we have a correct method of selecting the right user for our research we can do like there is a method or a tool called screen survey screen survey are essential tool for qualitative research and while they sound simple they are actually not they are very complicated because sometimes we get confused by this research itself but screener survey is a little different it is just before the actual user research we are screening the user we are trying to find out the right user that is a screener survey screener survey uh, are survey people take before participating in research study they are made up of few question designed to weed out the folks who are not you know intended audience so we create tricky questionnaire actually during this screener survey and we try to find out who are not the right user for us and once we found out we just remove those or you know we are not taking those user as our target audiences so that's a method of doing it if you want the right participant you have got to design smart screening question also that's not always a straight forward as you might think you might ask question in somewhat roundabout way like some diplomatic way not straight forward you are asking why we are not asking straight forward because uh people might uh, give yes or no answer or, or you know maybe understand the intent of it so maybe they will also try to become the right user for you so that we need to take care of how to create an effective screener survey if you want to write participant you have got to design like all this thing uh, we need to take care of these thing know your goals like what you want to achieve out of this research define a specific target audience criteria like whether your product whatever problem you are facing is it for related to young people or is it related to orphanage so according to the problem our audience target criteria will vary it will change screen for behavior and psychographic you know we just screen for our user for this and for this we don't do for demographic or we do it later maybe this is the last thing we will do why so because we are not differentiating or discriminating according to the demography what is more important is behavior that is the first choice psychographic is the second choice write precise careful worded question it should be simple question easily understood but your screener question should also be in the right order you know like it should not be the like the last step is coming first or something like that the whole story should be created avoid leading or loaded question the question where um, you know you get uh, the answer like yes or no we don't want it we want the a sentence or an explanation uh, way of answering in their answer we are trying to find out the message actually it should not be yes or no include an open ended question to screen for articulation don't reveal too much yes this is just the screener it is not the user research itself okay and remember to keep it brief so this could be a questionnaire creating way and once we have created the questionnaire we can send to our intended user and then we can further shortlist after getting the uh, output from there so that's called screener survey we have already discussed about diary study this is one way of user research where we try to you know um, we just ask the targeted uh, audience to maintain a diary and capture their daily you know routine doing on that application or subjected application or the or the product 
is what how they do what they do all those things so that's what we do during diary study and uh, there are before and after norms of doing diary study the first thing we will explain why we are doing it then the second thing is we are constantly monitoring as the questioner like whether they are working on it or not and uh, we are at least you know establishing a parameter like at least this many activities you need to capture during this period and, uh, and then finally when we have all the data we are trying to understand that data by having a one-on-one -one discussion with those users or a cumulative discussion according to the sensitivity of the issue the diary study is a very good method of uh, user research where user is working on it so for you it is of course less work but definitely not uh, because you you need to monitor it also uh, but you get a very good data out of this okay so that's called the diary study method of ux okay this third chapter of this second module is identifying and writing problem statement once we have gathered all the data through observation and interview you will need to collect all the data in a single place so that you can begin finding common thread and similarity space situation is in terms of gathering all the information that you have discovered in the need finding of portion of the design process and displaying it all visually in a single place so what does it mean like if you have interviewed 15 user for example you know all the 15 interviews the all the answers you have collected and you have placed it on a sheet you know like you can see the example here all the uh, you know answer given by them are actually captured on a sheet and once we have captured them on a sheet we try to synthesize analyze this available information in more meaningful way how we do it we use a document called empathy map and in this empathy map we have four sections actually one section goes to what this user says the other is talking about a user's feeling and emotion the third is talking about his thought or or his belief established uh, you know uh, perseverance and the fourth is talking about his action and behavior so his or action and behavior so all this information which we have collected through interviewing or any other method of user research we just analyze further and put them into empathy map why we do that out of this empathy map we find out the patterns actually the pattern of the problem the common thing among the user the most prominent pain areas all those things can be captured out of it and once we have all these things you know analyzed we go to the next step which is called problem statement okay and what we do here we like problem statement first of all let me define why we are doing it because the problem statement will clear that what our activity will happen so far user research is concerned what we are going to do that will be actually based on this problem statement and how we form this problem statement this problem statement is around a person which is our common user uh, so the first part of the problem statement would be the user and a discussion about it like if you see in this example david is the name of the user he is the disorganized analyst who is good at what he does, but he really bad about staying organized and following workflow productivity best practices. So this is David and some discussion about himself. That is the first part of the problem statement. Now comes the second part, which talks about his requirement, his need, description of his need. Like his need here of David's need is to save the time he wastes in gathering, finding, and recreating knowledge that already exists. So that is need, actually. This is his need. So that is the second part of the problem statement. And then comes the third part, which talks about the insight that uses adjective. Why? Why he's having this need? Framing your challenge in the format, uh, you know, ensure that. So what is why, actually? First of all, let's understand this. So David, which is a disorganized person, he needs to save time. Why? Because he spent too much of time on of his day on activity that frustrate him and prevent him from making money by looking at more ideas. So that is the motivational factor which creates this need of this user. So three part of a problem statement. So that's what is called the 
defining identifying the problem statement and this problem statement you can only do when you have already done ux research actually by selecting any method like maybe one of our interviews you have collect all the data you know analyze with the help of empathy map just a quick info guys intellipad provides advanced certification in ui ux design this course is developed and mentored by enict iit guwahati the course link of which is given in the description below now let's continue with the session once you have analyzed it then you will create this problem statement okay let me just show you what i have done okay see what i did here in the beginning i have you know this is a practical problem which is happening with me right now we have a software development process where the designer is creating a whole design and once this design is created he is creating a guideline of design then he passes this the guideline and design to the development team let me just show what i'm talking about okay so this designer is creating a design and passing a design guideline to the engineering team the development team this development team is implementing the design on the basis of the design specification given by the designer now once this guy has worked on it it is tested by the qa or the tester for the uh, validity of whatever product has been designed or or created now one part of the whole creation is ui so what designer does when he create the final design he create a design specification have you ever wondered how much effort has been put into designing the applications you use on a regular basis like uber or facebook we can book a cab via uber with just 3 clicks through its easy usability and design and not only people of our generation but even a 5 year old kid or a 65 year old person can book a cab with ease using uber because of its usability welcome to the world of ui ux ui ux design is a science that works on improving the user experience and usability of the application Almost every company including the major players like Facebook, Amazon and Google heavily invest in it. The starting salary of a UI UX designer in India is 10 lakhs per annum and once you gain experience it will be in the range of 15 to 25 LPA and in the US it is $100,000 per annum. There are over 1 lakh jobs available related to UI UX design only in India. The objective of this course is to make you competent in UI UX strategy and designing. The course is also designed so that you master interaction designs, wireframing, guerrilla testing and other advanced design concepts. In the end you will be working on a project where you will be designing real world applications both for desktop and mobile all by yourself. This program offers 7 months of live classes from industry experts, 50 plus industry projects and case studies which will provide you real time experience. one-on-one -on -one sessions with industry mentors technical and also for interview preparation soft skills essential training which will help you get better at interviews and finally you can get mentored by the end ict academy of iit guwahati upon completion of this course you will receive an advanced certification in ui ux design strategy from end ict academy of iit guwahati This course is created by top industry experts to make you a successful UI UX designer and we also have considered the skills expected by top hiring managers who hire UI UX designers day in and day out. Intellipad strives to be the most customer centric company in the world and to back this commitment we provide you the following features. A dedicated learning manager will be available to you throughout the entire duration of this course. Intellipad peer chat where you can connect with your peers throughout the program. 24 by 7 technical support even if you are having doubts and issues at midnight or if you're from a different time zone we would always be available to help you all our courses are lifetime accessible which means you get access to all course materials and recordings forever 85% of the course is designed to provide you a hands on experience rather than a theoretical exposure Career services and guaranteed three interviews by Intellipad to help you and land your dream job and you would be provided that once you complete 80% of the course. There are nine modules in this particular course that cover an array of topics starting from design thinking, user research, principles of interaction designing, fundamentals of user interface, heuristics and interaction design, elementary sketching and wireframing, low high fidelity design, understanding style guides, elements and also prototyping. 
interaction with the development team, and finally, complete product design. Apply today and become an expert in UI UX design. This design specification should map with whatever this developer is implementing. And most of the time, I'm sure that some of you guys are working, you will find that the engineering team does not implement the design the way you have designed it. There are gaps always. And what happened when I researched on it, I found that 40% of the bugs which are found by the testers are related to UI design conformance, which is very high. And actually tester work is, you know, he's having more important work. He needs to test the whole, the functionality of the, the software. But right now he's spending more time on this problem where a lot many UI bugs are there. So that is the problem. So what I did, I just discussed with many uh, testers. And on the basis of that, I created this empathy map. This empathy map was created where I captured all the patterns there. And once these patterns were created on the helping of this empathy map, I reached to this solution. This is the problem statement page. What it say on the first, this is the iterative process, please understand. First, I have written that Nisha needs a revised and better software development process so that lesser UI bugs comes up and she do her work more efficiently. This is the first draft of the problem statement. Then I went to a team and we discussed together further reform the, the problem statement. So finally, you will see that problem statement. This is having three parts. Nisha, a QA executive who is very good at his, her job, but lacks UI design understanding and expert eye for it needs. Now this comes the second part of it need accurate UI check without investing much time into it because now third part comes the current process is time consuming needs lots of effort, which prevent her from doing her actual software quality check, like functional bug in identification. Also, she is worried that this might impact her job as so many such bugs are passed on by her also because checking is not possible. She's frustrated as she cannot make work life balance because she's investing a lot of time on checking these bugs. So that's the whole problem statement given by me after so much of the first step done, like first interviewing, collecting questions, then collating all the questions at one place then further analyzing these question and putting into empathy map. And on the basis of empathy map, I've created this problem statement, right? So that's how the problem statement is created. Let's also talk about dividing the user's research method into two ways, like quantitative and the other one is qualitative. Okay, so the quantitative research is the type of research that data collected and generally expressed in numbers like 40% of the user were happy with this function or something like feature or something like that. And a graph to confirm theory and assumption. The data collected are factual information. They are the fact on the topic. Under the quantitative research method, the factual information can be collected in many ways, such as the most prominent one is surveys. Like you throw you blast a survey questionnaire to all your 200, 1,000, 5,000 people and you collect quantitative data from them. You go with experiments like, uh, you know, uh, playing a real type of, uh, you know, sitting with them and try to understand all those things. Existing data, maybe you want to go through the available existing data. Observation is one more way of collecting quantitative information and content analysis. Available content, maybe online, offline, we just go through it and try to find out the information, the numbers, the statistics about the research. So let us also think in a simple nutshell way that the quantitative research always confirms or test, you know, like test means what, like whether this application is, uh, you know, good or bad in percentage, quantitative research will be helpful. But if you talk about qualitative research, which talks about, which captures the thought, concept, experience of people via interview, via focus group or case studies, or, you know, discourse analysis or literature review, all these things, what is the end result of it? It gives you the 
you know understanding of something like understanding of concept or thought or experience that can be derived out of the qualitative research qualitative research of course example could be like this like how satisfied are you with your curriculum study if we ask the student you will get the qualitative the opinionated answer uh, out of that user what is the positive aspect of the study program what do the student feel can be done to improve the study program so all these things are qualitative they are regarding the emotion concept so those are qualitative let's move further let's talk about uh, creating personas actually persona should be part of this best practices and analysis okay see what we do during this research research is not the only thing what we do as a ux designer we also have to do a lot of documentation or the analysis so that's a part of the best practices the activity which ux designer does like uh, the first of them is creating personas so once you have your problem statement in place you have your user in place you have your interview in place you have done so many interview on the basis of that you create a representative fictitious person it is not fictitious but on the basis of the discussion you have done and so the, this persona we define every aspect of this persona like uh, it is a typical user whose goal and characteristic represent the need of the larger group of the user right usually a persona is presented usually it should be one page because you want to see everything related to this persona in one go it should be in one page most of the time but it can extend it to two page also so you create persona by capturing behavior pattern goals skill attitude background of that person okay and why we do persona because a deep study of targeted audience is fundamental for creating the exceptional solution user personas help a product team find the answer to one of the most important question like who are the who are we designing for so this is the biggest question which the answer is given by this persona creation by understanding the exception concern motivation of target user it's possible to design a product that will satisfy user so it gives us a clear picture about that user right we have the description in front of us about uh, her attitude her knowledge or her uh, you know way of working her you know frustration goal everything is captured it gives us a clear picture as where we can head from here once we have persona then we start uh, creating a scenario you know like how this persona will travel through our product like we have the whole product here which has so many tasks in it but for this persona what would be the most appropriate way to come to achieve his or her goal and that is create creating a scenario that's called scenario right let's also un try to understand few more thing one of them is affinity map what we do here it is a kind of grouping of the available information in a more meaningful way from out of which we can find out the patterns or the you know way to create solution and it is usually done with multiple people sitting together like kind of a brainstorming and then we create the affinity map where we create we just you know group the information available information in a more sensible way which will make more sense and this will help us creating the scenarios and even the personas uh, the other way is empathy map and empathy map as a four you know uh, part of it like we capture all the information which we have gathered out of the user research that is what the user say what user feel what user thought or believe or what are the actions those all the things are captured in empathy map when would we use the empathy map empathy map can be used whenever you find a need to immerse yourself in a user environment they can be helpful for example dividing into customer segment of business model canvas elaborating on user persona capturing behavior and interviewing because while interviewing a question and building out the user in his user story so that's where the empathy map can be used moving forward one of very important tool is journey map also this is also a very important tool trying to understand the current scenario uh, so what we do in journey map 
in journey map we try to understand putting ourselves in the shoes of the user or the customer and see on what point where this user is touching our business you know in the business perspective it help business gain insight into common customer pain point however they can improve the customer experience define what customer and prospective customers needs to in order to complete a purchase and from the customer point of view they want to their experience with the brand to be connected and seamless so we can understand what exactly they want and they expect company to know and remember across multiple touch point who they are what they are looking for so the necessary information is available without the necessity of repeating or clarifying their need a map help reveal issue with silos in your business so we don't want to keep ourselves and the customer in silos so this help us the benefit of customer journey map helping you see where customer interact with your business focusing the business on particular customer need at different stage in the buying funnel identifying whether the customer journey is in a logical order gives an outside perspective on your sales process following the gap between the desired customer experience and one actually received highlighting development priority this is what you can you know inside you will get out of it allowing user to concentrate effort and expenditure on what matter most or maximize effectiveness so this is what a uh, journey map gives to you and why it is important let's study a journey map example here see you will see that this journey map is a, you know very well capturing all the aspect of the customer interacting with your business you see that on the right on the left side there are stages like activities is feeling uh, and you know all the stages of his response emotional response his experience and customer expectation on the uh, you know horizontal side on top you will see that the stages the first stage where he is motivated to buy something where uh, he is doing the to buy that what he is doing and what has been the level of his experience frustration or happy all those things are captured and then you know browse the site and then evaluate the whole product then the finally paying what kind of experience he has been you know going through once you have captured all these things this will help to improve your business on the point where it is low so far emotion is concerned like on these points the here the customer is not uh, you know looking happy as someone was also mentioned in the first exercise that the checking out is a frustrating process which is usually is so maybe having this journey map we would like to see which are the point where the low point where we need to improve our process and add value to the product right okay before that uh, i would also want to uh, you know talk about whenever we are trying to understand a problem for the solution of it let's not behave as an expert of giving solution let's start adapting a beginner's mindset like it's a medical fraternity we are trying to understand the problems our ears are bigger and we are trying to understand everything as a beginner in the hospital or the medical um, situation medical uh, hospital situation look for need around you so you need to you know also look for all the requirement what the user might require describe an innovation challenge three part who what is the need and why hear from companies professional who have adapted the design practices you know this will also be part of when we are identifying a problem we are trying to go to other people who are doing the same thing in the case of chro the hr issues maybe we are trying to find out like the problem is with a company maybe just think about ibm if they have a problem we will try to find out the similar companies draft a user journey once we have understood all this thing we will draft the user journey the idea as it journey and uh, then later when we have worked on the solution we will create a to be journey you know with the solution schedule observation and interview so this is all we required to do in the identification problem of the problem phase this is the you know kind of a journey of the user like uh, identifying the user journey like this was a crude example of finding out a movie and uh, in the old time and then you know watch it and give it back like they used to drive to a video parlor or the movie parlor so go to video parlor you know pay bring the cassette home watch on movie go back return 
pay the late fees if it is any, and then come back home. So this was the process and how it's to be shown. So what I'm giving here is an example of the user journey, how currently the whole task is done by the user. So later we'll try to find out where the problems are and how those problems can be mitigated. Right. So this is a, an example of user journey. Now, like whenever we are trying to identify a problem, this is how we can identify. These are those examples of finding out a problem, identifying a problem. Whenever we are trying to define a problem, this is the step even before that. Like how we can help employee in our company feel more comfortable. How might we help analysis in our company more productive during this strategic and planning phase? How we might be reduce the stress of commuter commuters? All kind of problems. So this is the example of the problem. So we can pick up any problem, put into that uh, three you know segments, and then define the solution. Okay. Uh, determine point of view, the need, the because, the who all part of the POV, we call it POV, the point of view, actually, this is the definition of the problem. Okay. And we put our problem into this format, like who is the user, what is the requirement and why all this statement. Okay, fine. Now come to the second chapter. Once we have defined our problem, we start ideating. Okay, how do we do that? The ideation phase. What we are going to do, we generate idea, meet with, it, with our team to perform and document brainstorms, inject insight from a broader group, the bigger group. As we just talk, like we will go to other people, how they are doing it, and all this thing. We'll take information from there also and select idea to pursue further. Right? That is our whole process. Okay. Uh, now, what is brainstorming? It is just like four or five related people gathering in a, at a common place and they discuss why they are discussing. They are trying to ideate a solution. You know, it's an idea generation session, actually, where we are trying to generate an idea. Actually, there could be wild ideas also. There could be, you know, any kind of idea. So it's a idea generation platform. And it is very creative and it is very useful in working. And there is a norm of idea generation. What are the norms? That we need to have a facilitator first. A person who is not the active participant, but he is conducting the whole show. Right. And why we need to have this person? Because somebody is required to conduct the whole thing going into the right direction. So we need a facilitator. So the responsibility of the facilitator is to make sure that everyone is participating, that the energy level is high all the time. That is also the responsibility of the facilitator, that nobody is judgmental here. Okay, please remember this is a very important actually. Whenever we are doing a brainstorming, nobody would say that, no, your idea is bad. No idea is bad at this stage. All ideas are welcome. Okay. Also, we are looking for quantity here. In brainstorming, we are asking everyone. And a facilitator is also taking care that it should not become a you know kind of a like chaotic, like everyone is speaking. No, the facilitator will make sure, like you might become a facilitator in the brainstorming session. Please remember that everyone will speak. You will give an opportunity to everyone, but Nobody should speak together, right? Nobody should be, you know, many people are not speaking at the same time. So we need to make sure that, you know, that happens. The facilitator need to make sure that one speak at a time so that we can listen. Now, the one more thing, which is very important that any side concern, like uh, anything which is not really related to the subject should be, you know, pasted somewhere you know, on the wall. And we will talk later about that because here we are doing a very focused work. And I have seen in brainstorming many a time that people have a lot, many other things related and they want to bring up, you know, that those things. Uh, so maybe, you know, for that, we can tell them that we will give a separate time and definitely we'll have to give a separate time to that. That discussion will happen later. So maybe we can just uh, listen. We can ask the, all the people to, if you have any other concern, 
you can just note it down on the wall somewhere and we can take it later on okay high energy is should you maintain that is also what that's what i was talking about now so this is the brainstorming thing which i was trying to explain that we are trying to generate idea around the problem and some facilitator will play a role of facilitations of this of the whole meeting and he will follow all these things so this is the brainstorming which where we you know come out with solution now let's talk about the types of brainstorming okay the types of brainstorms are three types one is a crazy idea brainstorming you know a crazy idea brainstorming is where we are not looking for anticipated ideas we are also welcoming you know unpredicted ideas you know which are not in this world actually out of the world ideas right and uh, why we are doing so because we are in the beginning of an innovation you know maybe sometime what happens that uh, there is no solution available in the world and maybe this crazy idea further refined later can come out with a brilliant you know turn into a brilliant idea so we never say no to the crazy ideas also let me tell you what is crazy idea like if we are trying to solve a problem of a for example there is a scout like scout in jungle and he is actually looking for a hidden treasure a kind of a game and uh, the the clue for that hidden treasure maybe some you know there could be some way of sending him the clue and on the basis of those clues he will reach to that destination the normal idea could be like we can just uh, you know on walkie talkie we can talk to him and say that this is how you can reach to that place or maybe you can have a sign board on the path the way the person can go these are the normal ideas but what could be crazy the crazy idea could be like you are having a kind of a invisible paint on the uh, trees where he is going and those invisible paint on those trees can only be seen by some kind of a glasses you know and uh, that way no other person will be able to see those thing only that person will be able to see so this is you know kind of a crazy idea uh, brainstorming will also help you know try to find out an innovative way these can be further refined like i'll give you an example here when we are talking about this crazy idea of painting invisible paint on the trees and looking through a special glasses maybe google glasses can come handy and find out uh, those paint and find out the ways like maybe some hidden encrypted language is also written on those trees with that color and when you wear those google glasses like which is worldly thing you can find out the ways so this is how you welcome the crazy ideas okay so that's the uh, crazy idea way also you know i just forgot one more thing when we are brainstorming we are looking for quantity right we are asking everyone to throw as many ideas as possible they are bad they are good they are crazy they are whatever but we want more ideas why we want more ideas if you look at the old story like we kiss uh, to find out a prince is old proverb that if you trying to find out a prince in a frog you need to kiss as many frog as possible right so that's the idea behind it that you need to have the as many ideas written on the board as possible you know to find out the right idea so in encourage that when you are a facilitator in a design thinking workshop that you ask the people to bring as many ideas possible do not look for bad or good idea okay do not be judgmental at this stage that we will filter later on so that's called the crazy type of brainstorming now the second type of brainstorming is called sabotage brainstorming sabotage brainstorming is negative you know thought about a solution you know the sabotage idea could be let me broadcast the whole path to everyone and this person will find out his way but this will kill the whole purpose of the game you know so this is called sabotage way and why we do that to make our solution fail full proof you know we will just put our mind on those ideas also which can flop the show 
why we are doing it so that we can refrain from them later on so that is also one way of doing the brainstorming now comes the third one which is actually very important the third one is called constraint brainstorming okay like whenever you are approaching to a problem it should be simple in the starting right i am giving simple example like an application created to deliver food at your home right now you can work on that solution like uh, maybe there are listing of restaurant and there is a food dishes available and you can choose and you can order and you can get the food but now in this context of constant brainstorming we put constraint on those uh, on the user or maybe on the con- or the situation the constraint could be for example like it is for the very old people now this food application is for old people so what you did you put a condition here you know like for the old people what you will do because old people they are not tax savvy they cannot see things you know uh, the smaller things so those are the constant uh, they might uh, be looking for specific healthy things those could be the constant so this is the next level of brainstorming when we have done the first level of brainstorming the simple brainstorming we put constraint on the brainstorming put a condition on it and then further brainstorm to bring result in a certain situations maybe for blind people maybe for elderly people just a quick info guys intellipad provides advanced certification in ui ux design this course is developed and mentored by enict iit guwahati the course link of which is given in the description below now let's continue with the session you know maybe in any difficult situation we just put on it and try to brainstorm again right so that's called the constant brainstorm so we talked about crazy brainstorming we talked about the sabotage brainstorming and we talked about the constraint brainstorming let's talk about the fourth one also which is very practical actually the fourth one is called the analog brainstorming like whenever you have a problem and you see that there is a similar situation is somewhere else and the situation is solved by some other thing the the same solution you put here and try to create a solution in this situation so that's called the analog brainstorming cases okay a little bit more about brainstorming that you built up on the ideas of others also the beauty of brainstorming with multiple people is this that you know uh, we built up on the ideas of other person like for example if somebody has thrown up a crazy idea like uh, invisible paint on tree maybe some other person say yes this is a good idea because you can look through the google uh, glasses so that's how you built up a solution during the brainstorming so that's also a very good thing okay so this is about the brainstorming okay after solution ideation is creating user stories what is user story and why we create those user stories once we have defined the problem of brainstorm and we have understood this uh, user well we try to define his path or of the part of his life of doing related to this problem so that's what the user story is user story are a simple tool to articulate the user's perspective they are not long they are not wordy they are actually um, you know a short single sentences things they are particularly important in agile environment where they facilitate the functionality of a system but can be used in any environment to ensure that design and development are focused on user need right so we are creating those blocks around which the whole you know functions are being created first design and then then uh, implemented they deliver the who what and why the same thing which we have discussed earlier so the user story is actually created to when we have understood the problem and how currently the person is doing his work we just create the whole path from where to where and what to be done that's called the user stories okay let's understand more about the user story okay let's understand also what is the difference between use cases and use user story so the user story was first described in 98 it was mentioned that the user story could be used to define scope of a development right so what we understood out of it that user stories are 
defined for the team who is working on that solution right from the designer to developer and the tester designer will understand what is need to be the solution needs to be created the developer will create code or you know implement the whole the function live on the basis of that user story and the tester will test on the basis of that user story only use cases are virtual description of action taken by a user which are usually recorded in universal markup language it is commonly agreed today that use case and user story are serve different purpose use cases address how a requirement will be handled whereas user story simply captured the requirement right use cases is the description of the requirement whereas user story is for the mainly for developer as to capture what is required to be done here in that piece okay let's talk about the benefit they are simple and quick to understand they allow programmer to quickly implement customers user and value they don't need very much maintenance or you can write in word doc only they allow to be chunked into a smaller milestone you will see that in your product development all the pms they first talk about all those things user stories and they give the you know the assignment according to user stories because this help them to create the milestone in during the sprint they make it easier to estimate cost on a project for the development right on the basis of user story you give the t-shirt sizing right that for design, how much time a designer will take how much time a developer will take on that particular user story how much test will take they facilitate cooperative working with the client and users right this can be shared with the client and uh, you know among team also like designer and developer and tester on the basis of user story they can have a better communication between each other okay uh, user story can be very useful to articulate the users and clients requirement for a system in a simple one liner or for each requirement they fit neatly into agile development method and ensure clear understanding of what's needed from each sprint right that's what we create user story user story you can associate it with the development actually you know most of the time right let me give an example of user stories they are listed like this this is uh, could be a you know user story for a, a recruitment website like uh, these are defined like just like general user task browsing job post resume receive job alert post vacancy amend vacancy cancel vacancy this is for the prospective employee or the candidate this could be use case user story for other kind of user opt in a list of system event search job with basic criteria upload resume in pdf uh, subscribe job alert uh, no this is again for the employee the other one is hourly backup for system data build a resume with resume builder again this is all for the user actually employee employees so what i'm telling here that these are the example of user stories you divide them into chunk you go to the sprint somewhere your pm will talk on this basis on this building block they will estimate your work in it according to this particular user story give the work to the and the developer or the designer or the tester he will understand how much time each one of of them will take all this thing happen on the basis of this so this makes the communication easier you know among the team okay let's move on to wire framing low and high fidelity something which is very much related to us uh, so what we are doing here we are leaving our shirt of ux designer and wearing putting on the shirt of ui designer now but i think this stage is for both as a ux designer also sometime you work on it and most of the time you work on wire framing also it came from very old well established uh, other kind of designing skill that is architecture or uh, you know cad so they create wire frame which is a kind of a easy solution which can be iterated very quickly because you have not put a other thing on it like colors like shade like lighting like uh, you know all other thing you are just creating the wire frame and giving an a you know initial concept of the whole solution so that's the wire framing 
let me just explain what is low fidelity wireframe and why we do it. See, I'll tell you what happened. Whenever we are working on a problem, we create a prototype. Okay. And in the initial stage of any solution, it might be wrong, you know, 90% or 98.5%, it could be wrong or partially wrong, right? So you do not create something with a lot of work or, you know, hard work on it because you are ready for the iteration. So at this stage, you are creating something which is highly iterative, very easy to create and highly iterative. That's why we do not put colors. We do not put a particular font. We do, do not put even pictures here. And we create something which is looking like a solution, but does not have the detail into it. The advantages in initial um, phase with iteration is high. We are giving a concept. We give an idea. We take up to the stakeholders and we discuss with them because this is hypothesis is still right. It is not the right solution. This is on the basis of the assumptions or the values the solution going to give. So this is a, a very fragile or, you know, hypothetical or assumptive approach. We are expecting people to come up with their comment on it and according to their experience, and then we'll change it. So this is the low fidelity wireframing, which is done in the initial phase of the concept creation and we share with the people. So what is high fidelity wireframing or mid fidelity wireframing? Okay. When this is created, especially when uh, we are in the, we have crossed some level of iteration, these two a solution, which people think we will start trusting that this will work. Then uh, we create this high fidelity where we put uh, the colors because sometimes colors are also important. We put a, you know, specific font to make it look more authentic. We still are not putting the images that's in least needed because that's decorative. So of course they are informative also sometime, but at least at this stage, we can still work without them. Okay. So low fidelity we do in the initial phase, high fidelity we do in the final stage of a concept. Let me tell you a very bad thing, you know, usually what happened whenever you are putting lots of colors and making it impressive, you know, it gains trust with your users or stakeholder. They think, yes, yeah, this is fine because this is looking so nice. Aesthetic appeal is there. They are happy. And actually as a true designer, we don't want that people should be look at it and looking at one aspect and become happy. We want to look at the real, you know, solution, whether it is working for them or not. So people, we don't want their, their mind to divert to some other thing, aesthetic or other thing. We want them to look at the real thing first, right? So that's why try to avoid the, uh, you know, creating the high fidelity in the beginning stage to just to impress people. Sometimes we do it. I have also done it, you know, just to impress the client. We have created the high fidelity and given to them and they are happy. And, and later we found so many problems. So it should not ideally be done actually in the beginning stage, we can do it later, right? Okay. Let's move further. Sitemap. Sitemap is a list of pages of the website within a domain. So it's a list of pages, but not just as other list. It is kept in a certain order, you know, certain hierarchy. So that's how it is called sitemap. Like it shows the relation with other pages on the whole uh, map of the website. And why it is important, um, it might be for a designer, it is good to know the whole ecosystem of all the pages, but especially once you have your website or application running, it helps in SEO also, in search engine also to look at the correct uh, place to go to your website. So that's, that's much I will talk on the point of view of the designer. For developer, there could be more thing, you know, which should be learned so far. Uh, sitemap is concerned like XML and all those things, which will help to, and again, in, SEO and Google search. So sitemap, as I just told that it is just a interaction map of the whole website, which we create once we have the whole solution wireframe accepted. Majorly this sitemap is the work of information architect who are trying to put the, which thing should come first and what should come later. Those people are also, they create the sitemap. Okay. Let me move further. Let's talk about 
clicking through wireframe uh, prototype. Okay, so what I'm trying to show you here is quick prototyping. So this is my real life uh, actually problem and solution. Okay, what is the problem? The problem was that a tester, when they are trying to, they are testing in day-to-day -day life, they are testing the product uh, once it is developed. They found a lot many uh, UI related bugs, the design related bugs, like whatever designer has designed, it is not 100% uh, mapped by the engineers or the development team. And a lot many bugs come on the stage for that tester. So how to mitigate that problem of, uh, you know, uh, UI bugs, uh, coming lesser or how to smartly checking them. The whole solution after first of all interviewing, brainstorming, ideating, and then coming up to a solution, then I reached to this process improvement solution here. So this process actually earlier, whatever process was there of the product development life cycle, I just tweaked it or added few steps and make it a solution for the tester where the UI bugs are reduced or they are tested quickly or smartly. That's the solution which is depicted through this process diagram. Now let's see what we are doing here. Okay, so what you do, like uh, Figma has this three thing here. You look at here, like there is a design phase of the whole solution. There is a prototype phase and there is inspect phase. The design phase is the first phase where we all designer design the whole solution, the whole pages of the application or the website. Once it is designed, we go here, especially when we trying to create a prototype. What we do, we connect each page with each other in a logical manner as how it should work. Like in my case, like I, this is the uh, first uh, splash page. And uh, I just explained the new improved process where it's a click here to proceed. I see what solution is there. When you want that user, when you click, it goes to next page. What do you do in Figma? that you just simply, you know, arrow will come up automatically and this arrow will connect to the next page. Simply, it is done. Now you are connected. Whenever you will click on this button, you will go to this page. We'll show you later. Now you have more attribute to add here, where you want to show this click happen. Should it be a push uh, horizontally or pull horizontally or pull vertically or horizontally? That is also you can define, right? So this button is connected to this page. Now in this page, we have the second step, which is the designer consult with the developer to check the feasibility. Now this is a designer. This is his design. He's explaining to engineer. Engineers will tell that whether he can work according to the current skill or technology, whether it is possible or not. That discussion is happening here. So if the user of this prototype want to go back, he will click here and he will put this arrow to back button. But if the user want to go ahead from this stage, he can just go to the next page like this, right? On next page, what is happening? Designer work on the design. Now, what happened like uh, out of this, if the developer is saying that, no, this is not feasible, then the designer will work on that part. And then once again, he will, once he has worked, he will go to the next stage where they will share with the whole team of developer, tester, and uh, designer all sitting together. And what they are doing, there are two conditions here. Some changes suggested by the team out of this meeting. If this is the condition, then where this user will see, the next thing he will see, he will go that designer should rework on those changes. If not, no changes are required, then what will happen? You can go to next page like this. You see that this hotspot created and this arrow is telling that this page will come when you will click here on this, right? And once you are here, the next step is what is happening here. The designer, after completing the design, is sharing the design guideline to the developer and tester, and is also sharing this Figma file on which this application is created with the developer and tester. If the user of this prototype want to move forward, you can go here. If the user of this prototype or the viewer of this prototype want to go back, if you still want to study what is there in this step, they can go back. So this is the way of creating prototype. Let's see how this is running. Now it is getting created. This is the home page. This is the first page, pro one. You can put it anywhere. That is how the ideally prototype should start from. Okay. I come here on this next second step. I go to next step. I go to next step. I can go to 
some changes step, then go to next step again. So that's how the whole prototyping can be done, right? All right. So now finally, the salary is uh, for a UI UX designer. Uh, in US, it's ninety-five thousand dollars. In India, it's ten lakhs per annum. So this is the average starting salary. And for a senior UI UX designer, the average starting salary could go from twenty to twenty-five LPA in India, and in US, it's hundred and twenty thousand dollars. All right. So educational requirements. Uh, so basically, you don't. There is no particular uh, degree or there is no particular major to get into UI UX. But it's obviously the uh, employers would want you to have a bachelor's degree. It would be better if it's in a relevant field, for example, in computer science, if you know software development in design. So if it it is better if it's in a relevant field. But if not, it doesn't matter because UI UX. Does not come exactly under computer science, or does not come exactly under design. It's a kind of a science because it's more of research and then design rather than just sticking to one thing. So educational requirements is not actually a mandatory thing. It's not a strict thing, but obviously every uh, employer would want a bachelor degree. Most employers would want a bachelor degree, and it can be in any field. All right. So now let's look at the roles and responsibilities. There is you. So basically, the first thing is create user-centered designs. So you cannot create a design because you like the design. You cannot create a design because the uh, employees or the developers or your stakeholders like the design. So that's not the only thing you can do. You will have to create design based upon the feedback and behavioral patterns you will see saw upon the users. So you will have to create designs. Which are user centered. It should basically, uh, uh, what is that, reciprocate what the users asked for, so that they would know that you've given what was asked for, and uh, so that basically increases your application's usability, and that would make your application even better. Create user centered designs by understanding business requirements, the voice of the customer, user journeys, customer feedback, and usability findings. So using all of this, you are creating a design. Which basically concentrates more on the user itself. So the pattern of the user, the user journey—that is what kind of applications they've used and how would they like the application to be. The feedback from the customer after testing out the applications. Uh, what are the business requirements? What exactly is the feature? Let's say you, if your application is going to make cab booking easy, and let's say you are trying to implement something else in your application, which is not even required, uh, which is just an extra feature. So. It's better to not have that feature or have that feature separately, but to keep the main part of the application pretty simple. That is in the application's design itself. And then second is quickly and iteratively create user flows, wireframes, prototypes, low and high fidelity mockups. So this again talks about. So this again talks about how the flow of the application should be. So what are those steps? So for example, as I told you, there should be a minimal number of steps or a finite number of steps in order to complete your task. So to book a cab, it takes only three clicks. There is nothing else to do. So like that, whatever application you're building, there should be an indefinite number of clicks, and that should be very very minimal. And as minimal as it is, it's even better uh, because if the usage time for uh, getting something from your application is minimal, in that case, it would make the usability of your application even better, and people would prefer using your application. All right. So now uh, the next point is communicate with product and engineering teams. So obviously the development part is done by another person. So the development team and the engineering team. So the application is built and developed. The code and the logic is built and developed. So now your design and your research should basically coordinate and make the application even better uh, in order to basically how to say that. Um, yeah, so the application's logic is different, even though the logic is the king, even though the logic does everything. So let's say I click on, I do those three clicks and click on get me a cab. So an algorithm runs in the background, which basically selects the nearest cab, which basically selects, uh, which basically uh, finds the nearest path to go on, uh, go on, and uh, uh, yeah. So basically it. So that algorithm makes everything works. The algorithm makes everything works. But even though what you see is the design and the usability, the user does not see the algorithm. Even though the algorithm is very, very uh, unique and very powerful, and it does not matter because the user sees the design rather than 
the uh, algorithm itself, the actual working itself. All right, so it's better to, uh, so the UI UX designer should obviously communicate with the uh, product team and the engineering team in order to make sure the application is in par with the algorithm itself. All right, so whatever happens, the design should uh, make, make it make the application lightweight and even though the algorithm is pretty complex. Okay, so now next is ensure the voice of the customer is present by incorporating customer feedback, using metrics, and usability findings into design. So let's say once you design the application, and even then, uh, let's say the application is launched, even then the customer metrics, and the customer feedback should be taken uh, from the application in order to use it to make the application even better. Performing metrics analysis post launch. So this is again, after you launch the application, you will have to perform metrics analysis to make the application even better. Knowing certain prototyping tools. So basically before designing the application directly, you have certain tools like Sketch, Figma, Adobe XD. You can basically prototype the application on those tools and use those prototypes to basically come, you can basically get uh, the audience feedback with the prototype. You can just create a design rather than implementing any uh, source code in it. You can just create an application with just the designer and test it out and then move ahead with uh, in incorporating it with the actual application. And finally, obviously communication skills is required because you have to communicate with multiple teams. Presentation skills are required because obviously you're going to create, you're going to design and as a designer, your presentation skills and uh, should be uh, really high and collaboration and interpersonal skills again it talks about the same communication part so these are the roles and responsibilities for a ui ux designer and uh, yeah so let's move on to the next part which is skills and, uh, okay so we already discussed few things about ui ux and ui so i'll just go a little in depth and talk about it um okay so there is so these are three things we'll be looking into. First, I'll just talk about this. So the skills expected by employers. So collaboration is in 70% of the job descriptions, uh, which was basically taken by uxdesign.cc. So this is the source I got this information from. So according to them, 70% of all employers wanted their uh, you wanted the hire, uh, wanted the people they're gonna hire to have collaboration skills, uh, present design skills, then communication uh, experience in working with an agile uh, company, uh, agile methodology, uh, ability to iterate, that is having the same design and creating multiple versions of it and trying to figure out which one is better. Uh, yeah, so basically these things. All right, so these are the top five and uh, and as you can see the pattern none of these talk about any particular tool or any particular skill for example if you talk about development uh, of an developers so let's say most probably it would be python or it would be uh, sql or whatever top skill their company requires but when it comes to ua ux design it's more about uh, collaborating communicating and iterating uh, rather than actually designing all right, so now uh, let's just discuss some of the uh, top UI UX words. So in UX, so there is a UX psychology, UX methods, strategy. So these again, just talk about users. So how are you gonna figure out users psychology, how they use the application, uh, how the application should be designed in order to make it very, very simple for a user because your user won't be just, uh, let's say, uh, a person who knows how uh, to use smartphone, how they know how to go around a smartphone. The user could be a five-year-old, the user could be a 10-year-old, the user could be a 60-year-old, an 80-year-old, doesn't matter. But according to your UX uh, principles, your application should be designed in order that uh, it's really usable and very easy to use for anyone who's going to use your application. Um, yeah, so accessibility, user research, user interviews, uh, user journey, personas, uh, gamification, UX deliverables. So basically all of these major, these are some words, these are not actual skills for UX, but so user research, it's a skill which you would require. Um, behavioral analysis is a skill you would require. You research the, uh, let's say you do user research, using that data, you analyze and figure out their behavior. And according to that, you get some patterns 
and you see how the users actually go through your application and what exactly goes on uh, and how good your application is and using that information you can implement it in the ui design so coming to the ui so visual design is obviously the first one here because you already researched and you know what exactly the user wants now you are implementing it into visual design and making sure the application is the look of the application and the feel of the application is really good so the application should actually feel lightweight it should not be clubbed up with a lot of buttons it should not have uh, so even though your application has a lot of features it shouldn't look so heavy weight it should look so lightweight uh, so basically it should be minimalistic so because most people like minimalist designs which makes it very easy to go through or work through an application and uh, grids icons typography motion design so motion design is basically let's say i scroll through the application how the animation should be so the animation should be pretty simple it should just take me through the uh, list it should not have any crazy animations which would just delay me using the application prototyping is basically creating a prototype of the design before actually creating the design and then there is app design uh, interaction design and heuristic evaluation so uh, yeah so these again basically once you've designed it's making sure that the prototype is in par with the application design and interaction design is how the user is going to interact with your application and whatever parts require interaction should be done very easy and it should be usable and yeah so these are some of the major words in ui and ui and you can learn more about this uh, i'm just giving you an introduction I have covered this. So now finally, I just want to talk about the top tools. So Photoshop, I think it's pretty common, but apart from Photoshop, uh, you have Sketch, which is the most popular tool in uh, UX design. And uh, yeah, so it's a prototyping tool. And then there is Adobe Illustrator, Xior, Envision, Adobe XD, uh, Dreamweaver. So most Adobe applications. And then there are some other tools like, so there is Balsamic, there is uh, uh, Marvel, Framer, and Figma. So Sketch is the prevalent tool, and then you can choose any other tool uh, to learn. So let's say XD, Adobe, Adobe XD from the Adobe uh, uh, suite, and then finally you can choose, uh, let's say Framer, Marvel, or Figma according to your needs. So learning two or more tools will help you obviously. Have you ever wondered how much effort has been put into designing the applications you use on a regular basis like Uber or Facebook? We can book a cab via Uber with just three clicks through its easy usability and design and not only people of our generation but even a 5 year old kid or a 65 year old person can book a cab with ease using Uber because of its usability. Welcome to the world of UI UX. UI UX design is a science that works on improving the user experience and usability of the application. Almost every company including the major players like Facebook, Amazon and Google heavily invest in it. The starting salary of a UI UX designer in India is 10 lakhs per annum and once you gain experience it will be in the range of 15 to 25 LPA and in the US it is $100,000 per annum. There are over 1 lakh jobs available related to UI UX design only in India. The objective of this course is to make you competent in UI UX strategy and designing. The course is also designed so that you master interaction designs, wireframing, guerrilla testing and other advanced design concepts. In the end, you will be working on a project where you will be designing real-world applications both for desktop and mobile all by yourself. This program offers 7 months of live classes from industry experts, 50 plus industry projects and case studies which will provide you real-time experience, one-on-one -on -one sessions with industry mentors, technical and also for interview preparation, soft skills essential training which will help you get better at interviews and finally you can get mentored by the e ICT Academy of IIT Guwahati. Upon completion of this course, you will receive an advanced certification in UI UX Design Strategy from e and ICT Academy of IIT Guwahati. This course is created by top industry experts to make you a successful UI UX designer and we also have considered the skills expected by top hiring managers who hire UI UX designers day in and day out. Intellipad strives to be the most customer-centric company in the world and to back this commitment, we provide you the following features. 
A dedicated learning manager will be available to you throughout the entire duration of this course. Intellipad Peer Chat where you can connect with your peers throughout the program. 24 by 7 technical support, even if you are having doubts and issues at midnight or if you are from a different time zone, we would always be available to help you. All our courses are lifetime accessible which means you get access to all course materials and recordings forever. 85% of the course is designed to provide you a hands-on experience rather than a theoretical exposure. Career services and guaranteed three interviews by Intellipad to help you and land your dream job and you would be provided that once you complete 80% of the course. There are nine modules in this particular course that cover an array of topics, starting from design thinking, user research, principles of interaction designing, fundamentals of user interface, heuristics and interaction design, elementary sketching and wireframing, low high fidelity design, understanding style guides, elements and also prototyping, interaction with the development team and finally complete product design. Apply today and become an expert in UI UX design. Just a quick info guys, Intellipad provides advanced certification in UI UX design. This course is developed and mentored by ENICT IIT Guwahati. The course link of which is given in the description below.